welcome to our channel Life of Sai. I am Shreyas. And I am Richa. So this is the second episode of Life of Sai where we explore the journey of eminent researchers around the globe and we hope to inspire curiosity and to understand the scope of scientific research. And we also thank you very much for your support for our first episode. Uh, if you haven't yet, do like, share and subscribe to our channel Life of Sai. Today we have with us Anna von Kubeta E. Moral. She is a full professor at Ecole Polytechnique Federale de Lausanne, EPFL. Uh, she has her own laboratory, Laboratory of Semiconductor Materials. Her career started with a BA in Physics from University of Barcelona in 1997. Thereon, she went on to do her PhD uh, in uh, amorphous silicon <laughs> from University uh, uh, of um, uh, Ecole Polytechnique in France and then to do a postdoctoral scholar from Caltech. As a visiting scientist at Caltech, she co-founded a startup, Aonix Technologies. Then, funded by the Marie Curie Excellence Grant, she became the team leader at Walter Schottky Institute at Technical University of Munich in 2005. And in 2008, uh, she joined EPFL as tenure track assistant professor. Since then, there has been no looking back. <laughs> uh, in 2012, she received EPFL's Rolf Reneni Fondation Prize if I pronounced it correctly. <laughs> and in 2015, the European Physical Society's Emmy Nyotha Distinction for Noteworthy Women Physicists. She is also the Associate Vice President for Centers and Platforms at EPFL since 2021. Welcome, Anna. Thank you. I'm very honored to be here today. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, so, Anna, I remember the first career advice that you gave me was <laughs> to follow my passion. Uh, in a field where one can be uh, passionate and curious about almost everything. How did you find your passion and uh, when did you find it? What has been your journey? Yeah. I mean, if you are, uh, if you can be passionate about anything, it means you can be happy doing many things, which is, it's, you're very lucky because not many people can do that. That's what true. I also mean with follow your passion is to listen to your heart listen to yourself what you really want because uh, sometimes we listen to other people career advice you know think about the future all that you know very well what you really want to do and that's the driving force and your internal energy you have to use it because that's what will bring you further not what other people tell you <laughs> that's very nice so uh, when did you figure out your passion I, I have always tried to listen to to myself what my next step is and there had always been a critical moment in my life where I had to take a decision and it was important that I took it at that moment and listen to my heart made me make this decision like when I went to Paris for the first time you know I listened you know I that's what I really wanted to do I wanted to see another country and I wanted to learn about material science so I did it you know when when I decided uh, to to pursue a PhD it was also the same thing I had the feeling that's what I have to do and you know that's that's what I've been doing all my time, even when I had the feeling now I know I, now it's the time to have a child. That's also, it was for me the right moment and I listened to myself, not because other people told me to do so, because I always thought I will never marry, I will never have children. <laughs> so, <laughs> so at that moment, so that, oh yeah, that's what I really know. So I listened to myself. Yeah. That's great. Uh, growing up, who were your role models, people who inspired your uh, personal as well as professional journey? Um, yeah, I tried to to forget uh, bad people and you can also learn from bad people but uh, you know, starting from my mathematics and physics teacher at, uh, at my uh, school so before going to high school um, he was a, a person that had a lot of humor and really was able to motivate us a lot with uh, you know with a lot of humor and really picking our curiosity and make us understand that with math you don't have to work because you just have to understand and I found that really cool that I don't have to work to, to be good at math. <laughs> that's, really, that's really nice. <laughs> and then later on, I always try to look at people that I like uh, and I want to become like them. And so it's, that's what I've been doing. And, and probably the person that I've been most inspired uh, from was my postdoc advisor at Caltech because because he's an amazing person. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think he, he, he does the work probably of three, four people together. Well, he's he, he's extremely efficient in working. He does. Uh, he's super creative and he's always super friendly. He's always he always has time for you to discuss whatever you need to discuss. And he will always you would talk with him and uh, you leave the room and 
you have energy for such a long time because <laughs> he really gives you, you know, fuel with energy, with ideas, and you just want to change the world after talking with him. So that's uh, probably the person that has inspired me the most. That's indeed great. And as you said, like the people with humor always are inspiration and they kind of uh, make you go for that field for the research. And I remember we attended the lecture of Pontlitzik in EPFL oh, in yeah. 2019. <laughs> and I, I still remember he made so many jokes and it was super interesting to know the field. Yeah. Yeah, so, he's very authentic. Yeah. <laughs> So once you started your career in, in research, so as we all know and we experienced that there are many challenges and mm -hmm. many failures. So uh, how did you overcome your failures and the mm -hmm. challenges that you faced? So if you have an advice mm -hmm. for us. Yeah, I mean, becoming a scientist is to do, you have to become very much resistant to frustration mm -hmm. because there is a lot of frustration. And so you really have to believe a lot in yourself that, you know, that there, there, there's it, you're in a tunnel, but there's an end of the tunnel, and at some point you start seeing the light at the end, and you just really need to have faith in yourself that it's going to work. Yeah. And uh, so this is for a scientific project, and so you, you have to, to make sure you do the right things and, you know, check with your supervisor, check this and that, but you just have to keep working. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the frustrations. The other one is to be rejected all the time. You're rejected in papers, <laughs> you're rejected when you apply to positions, you're rejected in grants. So for this, it's good to know that everybody has this, yeah. even the, the biggest scientists, they have projections. Yeah, and so, and uh, not only scientists, but, you know, normal people. And uh, if you look at uh, musicians, they also, before they got uh, known, they got rejected everywhere to publish their music. So, you know, just knowing that this is the case and having good friends yeah. that you can share your sorrows with, that's the best advice I would say, you know, have good friends yeah. that you can co be confident with and knowing that everybody has this, then it's kind of normal. So you just yeah. know you have to yeah, go yeah. through. But when you are in deep, this deep moment, it, it is tough. It is tough. Yeah. 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 But I guess that's really a good advice for all of us who want to do research, all of the young professionals to have a good company with us, to have yeah. us inspired yeah. always. Yeah. So, uh, also, uh, when we talk about the inspirations, uh, so c currently I'm reading a novel uh, in Marathi, in my native language. So there is an author, Veena Gavankar, who writes about uh, people like scientists, social workers, who we have unfortunately forgotten, but they have given a lot to our society. So recently I'm reading uh, the biography of Liz Meitner, mm -hmm. the nuclear physicist. Yeah. And also I have uh, the biography of Rosalind Franklin. Mm -hmm. And um, so I realized that there was tremendous struggles that they had to face just because of their gender and despite of the fact that they tremendously contributed to their fields i mean still we are using the uh, research that they have done that time so uh, so i realized that uh, women in science often have these additional struggles uh, in a male dominated fields like engineering technology mathematics etc mm -hmm. So, uh, would you like to share any of such experience that you would mm. have uh, came across? Yeah. So, so early on in my career, I was very much protected by people that believed in me, and mm -hmm. I never felt there is anything. I mean, from my uh, PhD uh, advisor to my postdoc advisor, I always felt I'm treated like anybody else, and so this gave me the strength to believe in me and yeah. to believe I'm as good as others. So this, I think this is a good starting point that you start uh, being supervised by people that believe in you and that, you know, will allow you to, to become and to grow as a, as a scientist. Then, then later on, uh, I, I, I found struggles, you know, when, uh, when I went to Munich, I realized that, uh, that I'm not listened to, I, I'm just invisible. No. So it was the first time I was confronted to that you talk and you give an opinion, a scientific opinion, you know, based on facts. And it's like you have said nothing because I'm no one. And uh, it uh, only when I got this excellent grant, then I started to be someone, but I was the same person the day before. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And and I saw how the how then a, a, a male scientist came to get the position I was leaving when I was left. And from day one, he was taken super seriously. And so this is unfair. And I think the best is to just uh, try to find your way, uh, knowing that, you know, not taking this personal, you know, this is people with poor minds that do this yeah. and trying to find a way to work with people with richer minds and, you know, greater people. So don't go to a place where people are like this. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, that's very good advice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so 
moving on from this to your professional journey uh, can you tell me your one eureka moment and uh, with that <laughs> yeah uh, and with that what you're currently working on and what comes next for you as a researcher okay so yeah, there, there are many Eureka moments. That's why we do this job. Yeah. <laughs> the Eureka <laughs> moment is when you, you know, you're working on something, you're discussing, often is you're discussing, you're looking at things and then, and you realize, oh, that's this. And it's so much bigger and greater than you thought. And you discover oh, this new dimension of this problem. And, and this is, this is what, that's why we do this job. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, I can. I, I mean, I can tell one, but there are many, and some are bigger than others. But uh, you know, the day I, we were looking at, we were calculating how light is absorbed in nanowires, and and this postdoc was calculating, and we've we've been doing for a long checking that things are right, and he sees me, yeah, but absorption is much bigger, and you know, and 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 I said, and the moment I realized is it's the absorption cross section, you know, it's you are collecting light outside the physical size of the wire, so you are getting. You know, all the light that is around is getting uh, pulled into the wire. That moment is like, oh, wow, <laughs> yeah. you know, and the, like this is like, wow, this is something really much bigger because you are you you thought you are thinking that you are just making the calculations like an engineer to optimize a device, and then you become a new dimension. Then this moment is amazing. That's why we do this. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, now what we do this, we we work on understanding how. Uh, one-dimensional wires, uh, co uh, they they connect to two-dimensional structures, mm -hmm. and you know what there is at this interface, and can we add functionality? This is one of the things we do. Others is uh, for the solar cells to go a bit further and to provide materials that are made of elements that are much more abundant, so you know that uh, uh, compound semiconductors can be used for everybody, and so that the solar cells can be a thousand times cheaper than what they are now. So that everybody can collect their own energy from the sun. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's the other thing. So we, I always like to have two two different kinds of of projects: one more fundamental, one more applied. And in fact, they all feed each other mm -hmm. because because everything is connected. So it's necessary to have the group working different topics to to work into this. Yeah, that's that's great. Mm -hmm. uh, so you uh, we talked about how you uh, co-founded uh, your startup Airnex uh, Technologies, uh, and this is the era of startups. Yeah. And I want to know how young researchers can take their own research and apply it to solve uh, real world problems from mm -hmm. when you started yeah. up. Yeah. So yeah, any advices? So when I arrived at Caltech, uh, this was the place to be for new startups. It was 2001 and, you know, every professor had one or more startups and it yeah. looks like the coolest thing to do. <laughs> and we could attend to courses on startups all the time. They were for free. And so on campus, there was this culture that everybody would think about how you, what you are doing can be applied to a company, how you can make a better world with what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Even though it's fundamental, there is something, maybe what you discover is can be used for something else that is useful. So mm. this state of mind was there and it's still there. And so the culture of a place helps, of course. Yeah. But uh, in your case, I mean, there are also courses like this here. So I would say, you know, get embedded in this culture so that you, you can you can do it if you want. Yeah. yeah. Then you know, we started the company without. Uh, I think I would say very fast. And I think we should. It would have been beneficial to start to have more uh, basic results before mm -hmm. starting. So I mm -hmm. would advise to have. Uh, to work more in the lab because in the lab you have all the time. Mm -hmm. When you start the company, the, sta the time starts ticking. You need, you know, to need to make the, the investors happy. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so I would say, you know, make sure you have all the basic results ready to to start running because then you have to run. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's good. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good advice for us too. Yeah. Yeah. Start up. Yeah. So. Yeah. Then uh, then I would also time. like to add. Yeah. There's also not only. What, the, what you directly do with research, but there's many skills that you learn during the PhD, many things you develop mm -hmm. that can be applied for other problems. So also be open that it's not only the exact topic you work on that can lead to a startup. There's also all the skills that you learn and all the things that you develop that can be used. So yeah. be much more open to other fields. Yeah, yeah. definitely. definitely. <laughs> yeah. Uh My last question is quite specific about our field. So it's that uh, now we are in 2021 and uh, you have already an experience in the research of semiconductor devices and mm -hmm. nanofabrication since two decades or so. So how do you look forward for um, uh, the next decade, let's say, when we are going to be in Beyond Moore's era? 
so for also us who are uh, who want to be in the field for our research what would you give an advice how should we be updated in this really rapidly advancing field <laughs> yeah so i would not get too much worried <laughs> Yeah. Uh, because for your career, for your life, you just need to keep your bright mind uh, mm -hmm. working and, you know, to, to, to continue to be as you are and increasing, increasing knowledge and skills. Yeah. That's all you need because the companies are driving this evolution and most of the time we are not aware of what they're doing because it's secret. Yeah. Uh, yes. So in the lab, we do fundamental research to understand new aspects of materials and structures. And we may come up with new ideas. And as soon as an idea is very good, they will take it and they will develop. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because they have the capital they have yeah. and resources they have is much bigger. So, yeah, yeah. so I think we have the luxury of being curious and to pick interesting things. And maybe one of them will be taken by one of these big companies. Yeah. But uh, um, it is, I think, in the area of uh, electronics, it's very difficult to become the driver if you are a researcher outside the industry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have the luxury that we can have fun and discover new things. And hopefully once or one of them is, this, is used and hopefully if not, then your alumni <laughs> are hired by these companies because they learn very important stuff. So, I mean, the best product we have is our alumni. Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's great. That's yeah. good to know. Yeah, because we always uh, uh, listen to this news or read about sub 10 nanometer or sub 5 nanometer mm -hmm. fabrication and then I feel like, okay, I'm just getting trained with e-beam and then uh, yeah. uh, how it is going to be, how can I catch up with the... You cannot catch up, yeah. but it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that's good to know. So thank you very much. It was a really great and inspiring discussion for all of us and... Uh, we will definitely uh, take home all the inspiration and the advices that you gave us, like having a good company with us to support and also the advisors. Yeah. And to Remember have... also to be happy. Yeah. <laughs> if you are, I mean, if you are in a, in a position where you're not happy, look why you're not happy and change it. Yeah. Only you can change it. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's great. <laughs> yeah, I have had experience with that. <laughs> So okay. yeah, yeah, that would be great. And even for our uh, viewers, viewers yeah. it would be really a great uh, inspiration. Mm -hmm. So thank okay. you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much.